The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. <laughs> to give you more smoking enjoyment, Lucky's pay more. Yes, there's more smoking enjoyment in a Lucky because Lucky's pay more for fine tobacco. Millions of dollars more than official parity prices. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine light tobacco that the tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy. Just listen to what Mr. C.B. Smith, an independent tobacco buyer from Danville, Virginia, recently said. I've been buying tobacco now for 30 years. And year after year, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine quality leaf. Right mild tobacco that gives you a real good smoke. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 29 years. And a recent survey reveals that for their own smoking enjoyment, more independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So take a tip from the experts, and for your own real deep-down smoking enjoyment, light up a Lucky. Remember, Lucky's pay more. Millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. You'll agree. In all the world, there's no finer cigarette. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. gentlemen, last week, while temporarily deranged from a blow on the head by a can of tomato juice, Jack Benny put a $1,000 deposit on a yacht. He's recovered from his injury, but the loss of his money, plus the bad cold, have kept him in bed. Shall I fluff up your pillow a little, Mr. Benny? No, no, it's all right. How do you feel? How do you expect a man to feel who's thrown away a $1,000? I won't buy the yacht, so I'll lose my deposit. Oh, boss, cheer up. It's only money. Cheer up. Rocket, what would you do if you lost a thousand dollars? I'd kill myself. <laughs> you see? You see? But boss, we're so different. What do you mean different? Well, it would take me a lifetime to save that much money. You make it every fall from the cushion concession at the Coliseum. <laughs> well, it it is doing a little better this year. Yeah, that new slogan of yours is dynamite. Be kind to your spine on the 50-yard line. <laughs> Look, Rochester, I'm in no mood to... Uh, uh, the good height. Thank you. To discuss business, I'm too upset. Boss, why don't you try to get your mind off that thousand dollars? It's not helping your cold any. Okay, tune in the radio. I'll listen to the World Series. World Series? That's over. It was played last week while you were suffering from amnesia. The Yanks took the series four games to one. They did? Yeah, if you were in Brooklyn now, the whole town would be in bed with you. <laughs> I guess so. Well, maybe you better... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, maybe you better uh, read to me some more. That'll take my mind off of things. Huh? Shall I continue with that same book? Yeah. Now, let's see. Where did I leave off? thousand dollars just thrown away. Oh, here's the place. <clears throat> it was at this point in her life that she decided that Liverpool was too small for her. So Amber left for London. <laughs> but she couldn't leave without saying goodbye to Earl of Gloucester, who was so much a part of her life. Their farewell was brief but tender. As she held him in his arms, Amber whispered and kissed him on the ear and whispered... thousand dollars stole away. <laughs> oh, boss, you're not even listening. I am, too. Now, go on reading. Amber kissed him on the <laughs> ear. <laughs> Darling, if you ever come to London... Rochester. I'll be waiting for you with all my... Rochester. I'm sorry, boss. The zoo height. <laughs> now, watch it next time. Roger, so why are you closing the book? It's time to take your medicine. I'll get the spoon. You needn't bother. I'm not going to take any more of that nasty-tasting medicine. Boss, the doctor said... I don't care what the doctor said. I'm not going to take any more of that medicine. Well, I guess I'll have to do it again. Here goes. Rochester, I'm not going to take it even if you do take it first. <laughs> but, 
Boss, you've got to take your medicine. I'm not going to take it. You can't force me. Come on now, boss. Here's the medicine. Open your mouth. Mm-mm-mm. Now, come on now. <laughs> Open your mouth. Mm-mm-mm. What's your hooper? 19 points. Ah. <laughs> you tricked me. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if it didn't taste so bad. All right, boss. When the nurse gets here, you'll have to do everything she says. And that may be the nurse now. I'll go see. Hello, Rochester. How's Mr. Benny's cold today? Oh, just about the same, Miss Livingston. Is he still upset about that $1,000? He sure is. I don't know why he worries about it with all the money he's got in his mattress. I know. With him sleeping on a ceiling is like sleeping on a bank. <laughs> I'll go in and see him. Rochester, was that the nurse? No, boss, it's Miss Livingston. Oh, uh... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Did you bring any fruit? <laughs> No. Uh, well, come on in and have some of mine. I'm going in the kitchen, boss. If you want me, just sneeze. I mean, just call. I will, I will. Well, how do you feel, Jack? Okay, I guess, but it's boring being in bed, just listening to the radio and reading. Is this the book you've been reading, Forever Amber? Yeah. <laughs> But this book is six years old. How come you're reading it now? I didn't trust myself when I was younger. <laughs> Jack, believe me, you could have read it when it first came out. I guess so. Mary, what have you got? Mr. To... Billy, the nurse is here. Oh, have her come right in. Right this way, nurse. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. Are you the nurse? Yes, I am. Are you the patient? Yes. Hmm. Why do they always send for me at the last minute? <laughs> now, just a second, nurse. I'm Stop not... Stop talking. You're blowing germs all over the room. The nurse? Yes. Do what she says. Oh, all right. Oh, this bed is a mess. I'll straighten out the sheets. Well, well, of all the... Don't you know it's unsanitary to have a cat in bed with you? A cat? A jacket slipped off. Put it back on your head. Oh, yeah. Now, take off your pajama top and turn over. I'm going to give you a sponge and a massage. Look, nurse, I don't, don't want... Don't Just take off your top. Oh, all right. There. He your husband? No. Your boyfriend? No. A relative? No. Well, it's certainly nice of you to visit a lonely old man. <laughs> old man, now just a minute, nurse. For your information, I happen to be 39. Years? Well, what do you think, minutes? It would sound just as ridiculous. What? I'm going down to the kitchen now and prepare some food. All right, go, go. Why do they have to send me a nurse like that? Everybody else gets a bathing beauty. I get a lifeguard. <laughs> Jack, don't let her upset you. Well, what kind of a nurse? Is... Answer that, will you, Mary? Okay. Hello? Oh, hi, you Livy. Oh, hello, Phil. Want to talk to Jack? Yeah, but first I want to talk to you. Hey, what's the idea of giving me the cold shoulder this morning? This morning? Yeah, I yelled to you. You were just leaving the beauty parlor as Alice and I drove up. Oh, was Alice going to the beauty parlor? No, I was. She goes on Thursday. <laughs> well, Phil, I'm sorry I didn't say hello, but I really didn't see you. Well, I'm glad you didn't. My hair was a mess. <laughs> Like to talk to Jack? Yeah, put him on. Jack, it's Phil. Can you talk to him? I guess so. Hello, Phil. Well, how's nasal Rathbone today? <laughs> oh, just the same, I guess. Hey, Jack, did you get that basket of fruit I sent you? Yeah, thanks. So, what kind of a card was that you sent with it? Well, I thought it was very appropriate. I picked it out myself. It said, "Congratulations. We'll come when you're out of danger." Phil. <laughs> Why don't you learn to read? 
The card said, congratulations, welcome to the little stranger. <laughs> Imagine, welcome to the little stranger. Well, keep it. Some enchanted evening, you may meet one. <laughs> Look, Phil, I'm in bed. The phone is on the wall. My neck is hurting me. Now, what did you call for, anyway? Yeah, look, Jackson, I, I want to talk to you again. Ticket. What? I... <laughs> I want to talk to you again about the plans for that music on next Sunday's program. Bill, my mind is made up. Oh, wait a minute, Jackson. I know you're trying to get your thousand bucks back as soon as possible, but... But what? Well, I'm going to look silly on that big stage just leading a harmonica player. I can't help it, Phil. I want to get my buddy back, so we'll save it on the orchestra. You tell your musicians they're laid off for a week? Yeah, I told them, and some of them put up a pretty big beef. Oh, yeah? Who? Well, Remley, for one. Frankie said he ain't going to take this laying down. Really? Who's going to prop him up? <laughs> Who else objected? Sammy the drummer. You can't blame him. He suffered a terrific financial setback. How? He bet on UCLA. <laughs> well, it serves him right. He never buys one of my cushions. <laughs> i got to hang up. The nurse will be back any minute. Hey, Jackson. Hey, you got a nurse taking care of you? Yeah. Oh, you sly old dog. <laughs> hey, Jackson, I'd like to, uh, like to see the nurse sometime. You would? Yeah. Well, go to the Olympic Wednesday night. She's wrestling in the semifinals. <laughs> Goodbye. I don't have enough trouble. Phil has to call up. I wish the doctor would get here. I feel awful. <laughs> oh, there it goes again. I can't move. Answer that, will you, Mary? Oh, all right, all right. Don't be so grouchy. Don't be so grouchy. Don't be so Hello? Hello, Mary. This is Don. How's Jack feeling? Oh, he acts like he's the only one in the world who has a cold. It's like a big baby. Well, maybe he's a lot worse than you think. <laughs> Just don't hide, Mary. That was Jack. Oh, oh well, uh, let me speak to him. Here, Jack. Hello, Don. What do you want? Gesundheit, and I'll put Mary back on. Never mind, Don. <laughs> what do you want? Well, the sportsman quartet is over here at my house. The qu well, why aren't they over here? I want to hear the song they're going to do on our program Sunday. Oh, they can't take a chance coming to your house, Jack. After all, they're singers. They might catch a cold. Cold or no cold, they're supposed to come over here and rehearse the number. A lot they think of my program. Now, wait a minute, Jack. You're taking the wrong attitude. What? As soon as the boys heard about your cold, they were very concerned, and they've got some good advice for you. Advice? Yeah, here, here. I'll put him on the phone. Look, boys, when I've got a cold, I don't need any advice. Give it to him, boys. Look, Don, I don't need any advice. Button up your overcoat when the wind is free. Take good care of yourself. Careful, Mr. B. Careful, I'm careful. Eat an apple every day. Go to bed by three. Take good care of yourself. Passing NBC. Be careful in the free. Watch it, please. Ooh. Or you'll sneeze. Ooh. You'll get a cold and ruin your program. Well, I've got a cold. Really I don't have to get bad. one, though. Call a doctor, too. Take good care of yourself, because we all love you. When you buy a cigarette, try the brand you like. Take good care of yourself, smoke a lucky strike. When you're driving in a car, or you're on a hike, take good Carry yourself, smoke a lucky stride. If I may have my say, please do. Don't delay. What's new? Start today. Ooh. Light up a lucky and you'll enjoy it. Name a no tobacco bet. Smoke the best you see. Brown worms, holy back, tell us Boys, that was very good. When you come to the show Sunday, be oh, sure... Oh, come on, hang up that phone. It's time for your medicine. Look, nurse, I'm not going to take any more of that. Hang up that phone. Nurse, look, I can't stand the taste of that stuff. Never mind. Here it is. Now, open your mouth. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, Jack, don't be such a baby. Open your mouth. Mm -mm -mm. Mr. Barry, what's your hooper? Mm -mm 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 -mm. This hooper is 6.3. It is not. It's 19... Ah! <laughs> Barry, that's your fault. 
You don't have to be so smart. Come on, Mr. Denny, open your mouth. I took the medicine. I know, I want my ring back. <laughs> Look, I took my medicine. Now, let me alone. All right, call me if you need me. Thank you. Yeah, I wish I could get over this cold. Jack, it isn't a cold that's bothering you. If you got your thousand dollars back, you'd be up in no time. Mary, believe me, losing a thousand dollars isn't what's keeping me in bed. I've reached the point where my health is more important than money. Oh, boss, come now. <laughs> Look, Mary, you don't have oh, to... Oh, I'm in that room. You'll find him in bed. What's the nurse yeah. yelling about? Oh, it's Dennis. Oh, Dennis, I was hoping you'd come over. I wanted to try... Hello, and... Mr. Benny. Hello. Dennis, I was hoping you'd come over. I wanted to tell you... How do you, you feel, about... kid? <laughs> Pretty good. Dennis, I was hoping you'd come over. I wanted to How's tell you... How's your cold? Not bad. Dennis, I was hoping... Hello, you... Mary. Hello, Dennis. What do you want to say? What was it you wanted to say, Mr. Benny? Nothing, nothing. I'm too tired now. Well, oh, Mary, who was that who just let me in? Oh, uh, that was Mr. Benny's nurse. Oh, I thought it was mighty Joe Young. <laughs> I know what you mean. Say, Dennis, is that a new suit you're wearing? Yeah, do you like it? Yeah, but, Dennis, a light gray suit doesn't go with those purple socks. But, Mary, I'm... Don't argue, Dennis. Mary's right. Your light gray suit does not go with those purple socks. But I'm not wearing socks. What? We made wine yesterday. <laughs> oh. You should have been there, Mr. Benny. We put five baskets of grapes in the, in the bathtub and then took our shoes off and crushed them. I had to make wine in a bathtub. How many gallons did you get? I don't know. I forgot to put in the plug. Look, <laughs> Dennis, I've got a cold. I don't want to get into a routine with you. When my mother has a cold, she ties an aspirin on a string and swallows it four times. Dennis, you, you don't have to finish. Believe me. I know what you're building up to. I know. That's the way your mother takes a four-way cold tablet, huh? No, she likes to dunk. Now, stop it! I don't feel good. Janice, instead of annoying Mr. Benny, why don't you sing a song for him? Maybe it'll cheer him up. Yes, please. Okay. Very good, Dennis. Thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Well, by the way, Mr. Benny, that bowl I put on the table when I came in, that's for you. For me? What is it? A bowl of clam chowder. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Did your mother make it? She made the chowder. I don't know who made the bowl. (laughs) 
It doesn't matter, believe me. But I'm surprised that your mother likes me well enough. I can reach it, Mary. My neck is longer now. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Mr. Kearns, the man who sold you the yacht. Mr. Kearns, I didn't buy the yacht. I'm glad you called, because if you think... Now, you now, my money, now, Mr. Benny, let's not get excited. I've been in business for 20 years here, and I have a reputation I'm proud of. And rather than incur any ill feelings, I'm coming over to return your $1,000 deposit. You... You... Yes, I'll bring the check over in 15 minutes. Well, well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kearns. Thank you very much. Mary. Mary, I'm going to get my deposit back. Yeah, I'm so happy about it. Jack, uh, while you were on the phone, Dr. Nelson arrived. Dr. Nelson? How do you do? <laughs> now, don't leave everything to me. And wait, a minute, a... wait a minute, you're not my regular doctor. Where's Dr. Langley? Oh, he had to go to a funeral, so he asked me to take care of you. A funeral? One of his patients? No, one of mine. <laughs> and now, if you'll just... Hmm, where did he go? Jack, come out from under the bed. I'm out, I'm out. Look, doctor, examine me and go already. Hey, in a moment. Oh, nurse, nurse. Yes, doctor? Uh, nurse, when did you come on this case? Three hours ago. It's three hours, huh? Well, I'd like you to brief me on the situation since you got here. Appetite? Well, not very good. Only three lamb chops, a baked potato, and for dessert, a big, juicy apple. Well, that sounds like a lot. No, I usually eat more. <laughs> and no, no, nurse, I didn't mean you. I meant the patient. Oh, him. Uh, yes, him. Uh, what did Mr. Benny get? Uh, three lamb chop bones, a potato skin, and an apple core. <laughs> The apple core she threw at me. And perhaps he was over anxious. You know, feed a cold and starve a fever. Well, I have both. I have a cold and a fever. I have two shows, too. <laughs> Stop being silly. And take that thermometer out of your mouth. I put it there. I thought it would keep him quiet. Oh, thanks, Mary. And now, Mr. Benny, the first thing I want to do is give you an injection. Pull up your sleeve. All right, doctor. Wait a minute, doctor. Why are you standing there in the corner tying those feathers to the hypodermic needle? Well, I can't stand the look of pain on your face, so I'll throw it from here. <laughs> You're not going to throw that... <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Ow! Doctor, now I go. Cut that out. Look, Doctor, my cold isn't getting any better. Is there anything you can give me? I'll know what to prescribe as soon as I complete the examination. Uh, now, on. open your mouth while I adjust this reflector on my forehead. Now, I'll move it down over my eye and... Well, I never knew that before. The what? This little hole. It's in the reflector. Oh, this is terrible. Why? Well, yesterday, I sent a patient to the hospital. I thought the hole was in his head. <laughs> Open your mouth, please. Ah. Uh, Wider. Ah. Uh, Ooh, this is interesting. <laughs> I've seen tongues with coats on them, but yours has a jacket. That's from the, that's from the baked potato. I had to eat something. Oh. Now, Doctor, I'm sick. Will you stop fooling around? Do something, will you? I'll, I'll have you up in no time. Just swallow these little round pills. There are 15 of them. Fifteen pills? Yes. Yeah. Then take some water and swallow this little triangle. Wait a minute. What's that for? Well, we can't have those pills rolling all over your stomach. This triangle will rack them up. <laughs> rack them up. Doctor, I'm not a pool table. With your complexion, I'm not so sure. <laughs> well, I've had it up. You're the craziest doctor I ever saw. Now get out of here. Temper, temper. Now get out before I throw... Jack, Jack, put down that bowl of soup. Out of, out of my way, Mary. Jack, don't throw. I will throw it. Here I am, Mr. Benny, to return the deposit you made. Oh, my goodness, the man who sold me the yacht. Well, I didn't think you'd recognize me with this chowder in my face. I ducked, you know. Shut up, 
out, Doctor. If Mr. Kearns, it was an accident. I wouldn't do that to you. You came over to return my $1,000 deposit. Well, now I'm not returning it. But, Mr. Kearns, honestly, believe you, I didn't need to hit you with the chowder. Give me the money. I'm not giving you the money. If you can stop licking the clams off my lapel, it'll do you no good. <laughs> Mr. Kurt, you said... I know what I said, but now I'm not only going to keep your $1,000, but I'm suing you for a new suit. Goodbye! But, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Kurt. Oh. Shall we proceed with our examination? <laughs> hey, Mr. Benny. Hey, Mr. Benny. Well, what do you know? He's sound asleep. He isn't asleep. He fainted. Oh, good, good. Hand me the hypodermic needle. Nurse, you keep score. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, carelessness is the greatest single cause of fires. Fires that claim thousands of lives and destroy property worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Help prevent these shocking losses. Be careful always with lighted matches and cigarettes and in every other way. Obey all fire regulations. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... To give you more, far more smoking enjoyment, Lucky's pay more. Yes, at the tobacco auctions, Lucky Strike pays more, millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. Just imagine you're at a tobacco auction, inside a huge warehouse with the aisles lined with baskets of mellow golden leaf. The auctioneer sings out the bid. And as a basket of particularly fine leaf comes up for sale, the price climbs higher and higher. Time and again, at the very top bid, you'll hear... And another basket of truly superior tobacco goes to the makers of Lucky Strike. Yes, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. With every puff, every pack, you'll get more, far more, real deep-down smoking enjoyment. Remember, to give you a finer, milder, more enjoyable cigarette, Lucky's pay more, millions of dollars more than official parity prices for fine tobacco. So light up a Lucky. You'll agree, in all the world, there's no finer cigarette than Lucky Strike. <laughs> Rochester. Rochester, hand me my bathrobe. Maybe I'll feel better if I sit up for a while. Here you are, boss. Jack, that's your old bathrobe. What happened to that beautiful new $250 silk embroidered one you bought last week while you had amnesia? He sold it yesterday. The gorgeous yours. <laughs> Who sees it when I wear it, anyway? Good night, folks. <laughs> show which follows immediately. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in a day in the life of Dennis Day. the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>